We decided to make a special on the ivory trade after learning that last year alone, more than 12% of the world's elephants were killed for their tusks. We wanted to know why the demand for ivory is as high now as perhaps it's ever been. Our production team had just six weeks to answer this question, and so we split up. While I worked in East Africa, teammates were filming in China, where we'd heard the current demand is the greatest. There, we worked with Brian Christie, one of the world's top authorities on the ivory trade. Brian investigated the problem for three years, and his work was about to be published in a National Geographic cover story. That added a serious deadline to our work. We knew our team had to be out of China before the article hit the newsstands. Why? Well, Brian's got some pretty potent things to say. By every measure, China is the world's villain when it comes to the illegal ivory trade. And the reasons are obvious. China has a long history of ivory consumption. It has a booming economy. They are looking back into their past for symbols that they associate with their ancestors, with core values, and they're expressing those core values in ivory. Ivory has been prized in China for over 2,000 years as a status symbol, perfect for depicting religious figures, a material like no other. Given the circumstances today, the just obsession with wealth and the momentum of the Chinese economy, the momentum of modern Chinese life leaves no time, it seems to me, for thinking about the elephant in Africa. During production, ivory traders admitted they'd sell poached ivory for $300 a pound. Okay, so in a week you can get a thousand kilos. But once it's carved, even small pieces can go for that much. Mr. Lung, this is extraordinary work. How long have you been carving ivory? 58 years. 58 years? Uh, yeah. So you started as a boy. Master Leung spent two years carving this piece. It is valued at over a million dollars. When I see an older master carver at work, I can understand this is an art form that is unique to China, that they've developed over thousands of years. And the Chinese government is saying, when you look at a master carver, this is what we want to preserve. But then we move to a factory. Our research revealed that 83% of China's huge middle class intends to buy ivory products in the future. Retail stores in China receive their ivory from 33 government-registered carving factories. You walk through any of the major Chinese factories and you see row upon row of young people at work. And you see in the largest factory, empty seats. These aren't empty seats because people have been fired. These are empty seats because people have not yet been hired. Chinese government intends to expand its ivory market. That could be fatal news for the elephant. The elephant population is now at the lowest level ever recorded, and some people believe the elephant may be almost extinct in the wild in just 10 years or so. It's for the world to choose. Is this craft or this species more valuable? It was clear from what our team was capturing in China that ivory demand is expanding. But where was it coming from? And how are they moving it? In the next episode, we'll go undercover in East Africa with Aiden Hartley to expose criminal selling poached ivory. Let's have a look at the rest of them.